So yes, so we'll start with how to insert table of contents. See, most of the times what happens if you have created a document, let's say a project report, or uh, you know, uh, you're writing a book, or you're also preparing some, uh, you know, a paper, scientific or technical paper. So you would like to include, see all your table of contents, the contents that is there in your main document that you want to show as an index page. So you get to see the table of contents uh, if you purchase any book. So it, uh, most of the time it will be for textbooks or any other book for that matter. So that will give you the outline of that book. So let's see how to create that for the document that we are using. So first of all, before creating this table of contents, I would like to format my document in a specific, specific way. Only then it allows me to create this table of contents. So let me quickly format it. This is necessary for me to create the table of contents. So I'll say this is the title. I would want this to look like this. And this is the subtitle. I'll go here and I'll change the heading styles. So let's click on this. Go for this. So for all these, you are going to mention the heading styles. So how exactly you want to provide them. So I want to give this as heading two style and this one as well as heading. Let's say this is heading three. Just to show it as a multi-level list, I am going to take up this as heading two and heading three style. So once you have given this, once you are done with it, all you have to do is insert a page in the beginning. See, we want a separate page for the table of contents to be displayed. So go here, insert. So you have a blank page over here. I'll just click on it. It will add a blank page in the beginning. It's like this. So you can keep your cursor here. Again, go to references. See, that is where you have the option to include table of contents. So go here, click on table of contents. See, it will ask you to choose the style in which style you would like to see the table of contents. I'll just say this one. See, automatically based on your heading styles, it is taking all this based on your heading style. So this is the third heading the second heading type so all the, these two are in the first heading style and this is yeah this is also the first heading style so your title doesn't appear rest of the things will appear here along with the page numbers suppose you change the page numbers or some heading you would like to get that updated in the table of contents as well so what you will do just scroll down so let me change this message from your director and just change the case over here. Okay. And I go down. Adopted this month featured pets. See, if you remember, we kept this as the second heading style. I want to update it to first heading style. I'll go to home change this to heading one the list level will change if i do so so let this be heading two now let's go back and uh, i would also like to keep this uh, donations in the next page let's say i'll go here and say insert page break this allows me to show this donations part in the next page. So now the page number of this content has changed. So all that has to get updated in the table of contents over here. So you can see it still displays as page three and here it still shows Y as caps. I would like this to get updated. So you have an option here, update table, or you can just click on this. It will ask you update page numbers only. 
or update entire table see if uh, none of your headings have changed so don't worry you only update the page numbers let's say you have changed something in the headings as well you have changed the heading uh, part you have used some text or something like that so you always go for update entire table this lets you update everything right from page number so now you can see donations is appearing in fourth page and here it has changed to the lower case the y part and the best uh, you know ad the advantage of this is you can hold control and click on this see hold control and click on this it will take you to that part within the same document so it acts like a hyperlink within your document so you can directly go to that particular topic just by clicking on it in the table of contents so in the similar manner i would like to prepare table of figures table of tables so these things as well so in order to prepare this again uh, i guess yesterday reshika was asking how to label the images so that comes into uh, rescue over here so in order to prepare table of all the figures that you have used within your document you need to caption them caption in the format word provides not exactly so going and typing here so that most of us do so just after the image we go and give something over here so that's not going to help us in preparing that table in a dynamic way so it will be static so any one change within the document again you have to go and change in all the sheets so it could be page number the you know the title so if you include something in between the number of the figure has to change automatically these things doesn't happen so let me show you i'll go here i'll give a caption to this image so first choose the image you need to go to references or you could also just say right click you have insert caption here just click on it it lets you add the caption so how do you want this caption to look like so you have to choose the label type here see whether it's a uh, you know figure or equation or table what are you going to give so i'll choose figure so i would also like to yeah so now it automatically takes figure 1 and click okay see it takes that figure 1 automatically i know this is not the first figure in our document but let me show you what happens okay so after this see i would also like to format it so just select this so you can go to home tab i just want to modify the way the caption is visible so here you have caption right click modify this and how exactly you want that to be modified you can just uh, let's say you want it in times new roman you don't want the italics and you want to keep it as let's say in this text so the color i have changed it okay so this is the thing i want to apply the same to this one so again right click on this image say insert caption see it automatically takes this as figure 2 so you can also choose where exactly you want to give this above the selected item or below this so i choose below the selected item and say okay see we already had some text here i just select this hit delete it will come next to it so this will become the entire caption over here so next now i want to i forgot to give a caption to this let's say see if i have to give this so you would be worried okay now again i have to change these two to figure 2 figure 3 no not required essentially so go here right click insert a caption see based on the 
uh, order in which the figures are appearing in your document, the caption will take the number automatically. You don't have to worry about the numbering of the caption. You just say, okay. I'll just say, dog petting. So even here, I have to change this to this caption part. Just go here, click on caption. So now we are done with labeling all our captions, giving all the captions to all the images. And you can see it automatically changed the numbering to other two images as well. Now I have to prepare a table of figures that are there in this entire document. So just go here. I want to give that right next to this. After this. So we'll go to insert. I'm sorry, references. See so you have Sorry, here you have this. add table of figures, insert table of figures. You can click on this. See, you get to see what exactly you are trying to provide. So you can choose from the template in which format you want. So you can change the way it is looking like. So, so how exactly you want to look at. So I will, I will click this and say, okay, see. The table of figures appear along with the entire caption. So whatever we gave and all those with the page numbers. So even this can be updated in case you have any changes to make to it. See, update field, edit field. So you have so many things over here. So this is table of figures. I'll change this to a different style here, say adding one. Yeah. Okay, so next thing. We'll see how to prepare a table of tables. See, even for tables, you could apply this. See, table of tables, I'll give that. Okay, let me first prepare it by giving any caption to, you know, the tables that we have already. Just go down. See here we have a table. I would like to include this in the table of tables, let's say. So what you could do, right click on the table, select the table, right click, just say, insert caption. So even for the table, you could choose. So I want the label as table and I want this to be above the selected item and just say table one and okay. So I will give colon, I'll say adopter table, adopters details. That's it. So we have only one table here. If you have many, it will pop up even that over here. So just you can go here, place the cursor wherever you want. You just say insert. I'm sorry, references. So you can go insert. Again, choose this. You can also choose. So that what exactly you want to see, whether it is table or figure, you can choose from here. Caption label. So whether it's a figure, equation, or table. So I'll choose table and just say, okay. Let me add a section break here. It's not allowing me to insert in the same sheet. Let's go to this.
So now we'll give this just click OK. We'll see that anyways. So it's not allowing me to give all the table of contents that is table of figures, table of contents and table of tables within the same thing. But uh, you could choose different uh, sheets also to display them. So if you have many listed, so you can get it this way along with the page number that you have. Okay. So these are the table of contents type of uh, contents that you want to display along with the page number and what caption you have used. All this can be really helpful to you in case you are going to add some shades in between or figures in between. These captions will take care of themselves. And another great advantage of see, these captions that we have used is so you could go here in any part of the document, let's say you are trying to cross reference this. So let's say so over here, I would like to say C figure one. So instead of me typing it this way, if I had a choice, so if there is some, some option that would let me reference the figure that is already there so that we have captioned that would be a great way to uh, refer to that particular figure so you may not be in the same sheet see you can still refer it so instead of giving the value like this by hard coding it so what you can do is just type it just say cross reference you get it in the reference tab you go to cross reference click on it it will ask you reference type. See, it's a figure number. I'll click on it. So you will get the list of figures that you have in your document. Which figure are you trying to refer to? I'll choose this one. This is the first figure I wanted to refer. And what do you want to insert in the reference? Whether you want the entire caption to be given or only label and number. I'll just choose label and number. That's more than enough. I don't want the entire caption to be visible there. Just say insert and close. See, now, so I can refer to this image just by holding control and click. It will take me there. So this is a great way of referencing. So even if you move this image or some other changes to your document, it will not affect your content within the document. It still allows you to refer to it in a proper way. So you could use this to re cross refer to images and also tables, figures. So the so figures are images over here. So these things can be done. So by using cross reference. So we also learned how to use cross cross reference over here. So let's say you want to refer to a block of data here. So some part within the document. So you want, uh, let's say you know where exactly. So the extra information for that particular point is present. So you might have seen in some textbooks as well. You'll see for detailed information on this refer to chapter. So they would give that. So in the same way, you can also place a bookmark how to insert a bookmark within your document. Let's see that. So I want to add bookmark to this donation. So I'll just place it here. I want to add a bookmark to this entire data. Let's just go here. You go to insert. You see bookmark over here. You click on it. It lets you give a name to that bookmark. I'll just say donations here. Or list of uh, donators. That would be much better. Something like this.
let me give the same name I'm just say add so now you can see a mark here a bookmark so if it is not appearing you just have to make some changes in your settings guys so most of the times the bookmarks will be hidden from your document so there will be a you know a line symbol over here indicating it is a bookmark place so to display that you should go to file take options so advanced you just scroll down you can see show bookmarks over here just enable it so that it is visible in your document in case see you can see some square brackets over here so it says this area is bookmarked so just like uh, you used to you know keep some um, a piece of paper or you know a bookmark tag within your book so that you can refer to that part quickly so these bookmarks also work in the same manner so you can bookmark a certain area within your document so that you can go and check it any time you want so i would like to add a bookmark on this as well and just i'll just keep this here just say insert bookmark and say featured pets okay you should not be using space over here it's not going to take it just say featured pets let's say add so now there is a bookmark added here you can see this now how is it useful so i was telling you can either cross reference a bookmark or you could also use it for quick navigation within your document let's say you refer to that part regularly you can bookmark that so that you can quickly go to that part of the document any time you like to so let me show you the navigation first then i'll show you how to cross reference it so let's go to home so you have this go to option here so click on it so here you have lot of so what do you want to navigate to so i'll click on bookmark here so you have list of bookmarks given so that are available in this so to which bookmark you would like to navigate to select that and say go to it will take you to that place immediately so without having to scroll down the sheets see this is the best way to jump to that document immediately see this entire block was bookmarked so it is showing you the entire block being selected so previously we chose only a single line so it only takes me to that place so you can see that here so this is one thing and you could also use these bookmarks to tell that you can refer to it for elaborate explanation so i'll say check and say also check and over here i'll say give a space go to references use cross reference so what do you want to refer to reference type you just scroll you can choose bookmark you could also use all these types guys numbered item heading footnote end note equation figure table all these things so i am choosing a bookmark here that's the type of reference that i would like to refer to so insert refer to which text bookmark text yes and which bookmark do you want to refer to over here so i'll choose donations that's what i want to refer to and click on it and say close so let me give a period here it's taking the entire thing so after giving a period see i gave also check i directly gave the reference it's trying to overlap here so what i'll do give a space give a dot so just below just before that i place the cursor so again go to cross reference you give a bookmark over there and 
closet. It's going to give you the entire bookmark over here. See, I have to choose the content as well. So did you see that? Cross reference. See, bookmark text is being displayed over there. I don't want this. I just say the page number or if you had numbered it, it will give you the number as well. So I don't want the text because you have selected an entire text over there. I'll just say page number and say insert and close. See now if you control click on it, it will take me to that section of the bookmark. So it will take me to that area within the document. So it was giving me all this text because we gave bookmark text to be displayed there. So which we don't want. We want to refer to this area to see all that. So I don't want uh, exactly the bookmark text to appear here. So I just gave the page number. So you can say also check page four over there. So now it makes sense. So when you click on it, it will take you to that particular area. So this is one way of uh, using the bookmarks. So I'll also say, let's say you have used uh, other books or other websites over here to write this document. You can always add citation to it. Or you have used some quotations from the other books. So it is always uh, you know, legitimate and good to give credit to the other author who has put efforts you know, to bring it out. So what you could do is when you have to place a citation, first you have to manage the sources and just say, so I, I'll just show you randomly how exactly you have to give citation. So I can choose this. So you can say insert citation wherever you want to insert it. So select that, add new source or see, type of source if you already have some sources listed so you can also check it in the manage sources so you can add it directly see currently i don't have any list of authors or websites listed here but i could do so see i'll go here insert citation i'll say add new source type of source i'll say book i'll say some xyz author So if it is a corporate author, you can do so. You can give some title, the title of the book that you're going to word for dummies. I'm just giving some random title guys. So in which year, so let's say this was in 2016, which city, I would say Bangalore. So which publisher, so something like this. So you can also add few more fields if you have just by clicking on show all bibliography fields. So you can see all this over here. You can add all the information regarding that author if you have. Okay. So once you give this, you can also show the tag name over here. So this is the author name plus the year of publication. So let me give author name here I'll just give some name like this and say okay so you can see that in the manage sources over here so I have added this and I have cited it so that's the reason you can see a tick mark if you have multiple uh, you know, websites or authors being listed here. So all that will appear. So, and which has been cited will show with a tick mark like this. So cited source is like this and say close. So you can see that over here, so author 2016. And next, let's say you are not sure of it. You are yet to uh, see the, get the details of the author, let's say. So then you can go here can say 
insert citation and add a placeholder over there so enter cite cite just i'll give this no space just give this see in this place whenever you have got the details you add to the manage sources you can give it there and you can also go here edit citation you can change that or you can also say edit the source it will take you to this place okay you can choose from here all those uh, you know sources from where you have got this and you can add it okay so it's a great way to give credit to the original author from where exactly you have got the information so this is adding citation to your document so if you have added some citations let's say you would also like to see that in the bibliography so there is something known as bibliography so you would also see this more of it in wikipedia if i am not wrong so let me go here so here it is always at the end of the document okay so i'll go here i'll choose bibliography how exactly i want to display the bibliography you can choose from different formats that are available here see we have works cited references or bibliography i'll choose this one so this is the one i gave in my document so it is displaying this so it will show you all those places where exactly you have uh, cited the document so within the document where have you placed the citation so it will take you to this reference when you click on it so this is a great way to keep record of all the citations that you have okay and the next thing that i want to show you is how to add footnote and end note see footnote and end note are two different things so so you want to indicate something a very small message that you would like to show or uh, some meaning let's say i'll just go here i would like to add a footnote to this footnotes will appear right in the same page right below in the low i mean the footnote exactly the footer section it will show you the footnote if it is an end note it will appear in the end of the document that's the only difference so let me go here go to references you can see insert footnote so when you click on it see i'll say first footnote and you can see here a number superscripted as 1 will get displayed here so when you click on it it will take you to that footnote and you can add as many footnotes as you want let's say i'll uh, just add somewhere over here just to show you randomly it's not exactly uh, what you have to do i'll say insert another footnote see you have to first place the cursor where you want to give the footnote and then go insert footnote so it will take the second footnote now let's we'll say second footnote and it will appear there it will be cross referenced automatically that's the beauty of it see i placed the second footnote over here see even here so you i have to go to that place just double click on it it will take me to this place see it doesn't have to be numbers always you could also use some other characters so right click and say note options where exactly you want to show match section layout see footnote layout is being displayed the number format or you would like to use a custom mark you you can also use your own symbol there see some people would have used hash or caret symbol to display that you could also use that see now along with that numbering you have got this as well so these things are possible guys so it's a really good way so let me show you an end note as well just to close with it 
insert end node so again where do you want to insert it so you can choose the number format as well so i'll choose a b c and say insert so here you can see first end node and wherever you see that superscripted value here within your document when you double click it will take you to the end node so this is where i gave it so if i double click on this it will take me to the end node okay these are the great ways you know to give information within your document how to cross reference so we learned quite a lot inserting bookmarks citation how to give bibliography so table of figures tables contents end note and footnote so i could cover these things so let's see how to track changes see for that uh, i would like to open another document just give me a second let's say you have given a document you have prepared a document and you have shared this document among your friends to proofread it for you and uh, usually what they do if they have taken a print out of it they would take a red pen or you know some kind of marking to indicate where exactly you have to make changes so if it is possible electronically so that that is how these track changes uh, options came into picture okay so whatever changes you make it doesn't get eliminated from your document altogether but it will be visible to you and once you get the copy of the uh, revised document from your friends or uh, uh, colleagues so you can you are if you are the author let's say you are in the other end so you are the author you can accept those changes that they have done or reject it depending on the context of this document whether it really fits into your document or is that what you want to do with it so you can always take that let's see how to use this track changes let me go here to review see over here you have track changes give see i have selected track changes only if you track the changes it will be displayed and i would also like to show i mean uh, see all these markups so if i have made any changes i would like like to change it so i remove this see if i delete it it doesn't delete actually it shows a cross mark on it so that it indicates it has been deleted if you add in a text let's say i'll just give process here it will show that it is a new text that has been added by the revising per person who is reviewing it or suppose uh, you know you would like to add a comment instead of making some changes or uh, the person who is reviewing want to give a comment give a suggestion to you what exactly has to be done so you can go say new comment you can see here you can add a comment over here so i'll just say my first comment so these comment can be read by the author when uh, the review document is sent back to them so they can read it and it is up to them if they have to accept it or reject it so you can navigate through as well so navigate to each uh, comment or any track any changes that they have done within the document so you can use this so if you say you accept this one just click on accept it is accepted and if you say reject so nothing will be changed over there so it will get back to the same original thing so just say control z now suppose uh, you have some comments so you have made sure everything has changed so now 
even before you close this so you would like to switch off the markup just to see the final draft how exactly it is looking like so you can go here no markup you click on it so none of the markups will appear now so this is your final draft let's say so you would like to take a look of your final draft so before accepting or rejecting all changes or uh, you are done with it then it is fine so let me get back to this all markup again so here you would like to delete something see you have an option to accept all changes so whatever they have reviewed whatever changes they have made in your document if you accept it if you accept all the changes you could click on it and it will accept everything let's say you would like to reject so you have the same options given here as well and let's say you have some comments and you don't want to keep them you have an option to delete the comment one by one or if you have multiple comments given in your document you can delete all comments in your document at once so after making changes not before that and if you feel so there is a need to be changed so you can choose this so i'll say delete comments and you have to stop tracking after this so you can go here you can choose to say original this and uh, so all the markups everything will vanish so it will stop the tracking part just click on this it will stop tracking so now if i make any changes to this document it is not going to be tracked so but track changes is a very good option if you are uh, you know giving your document to be reviewed it's always best to get your document reviewed by your colleagues or so people who you trust with your work so so that so some mistakes that you might not have encountered so they might get to know when they review review your document completely now suppose you have another problem you have given the document and they have not tracked the changes they forgot to do that so what to do how do you know where they have made changes so this is a big problem now for this you don't have to worry you need to have the copy of an original document that is with you before sending it to the review whatever copy that you had you will have that and the copy revised by your colleague or friend you are going to compare those two documents together and still have this track changes applied to them and accept all the changes whatever was applied in the revised document let's see how to do that so for that see now i have the unformatted document so i'll say compare you have an option here just click on it choose compare so you need to choose the original document either choose from the list or you could also browse for it so i'll browse for it i'll take this document so this is the original document let's say and the revised one i'll again oh sorry let me show you that again see the original document is the unformatted one so which you had kept and the revised one is someone who has revised it for you that copy you have to take so i have kept two copies one which is formatted and the other which isn't and i'll say okay see the all the revi revisions will be displayed show changes in the new document or revised document original document where exactly you would like to see those changes you can choose from here so i am taking a separate document so that uh, my original or revised document doesn't get affected by it i'll choose a new document and say okay and what are the comparisons that you are checking for so you can see all these things so whatever changes you would like to see i would like to see all of them so show changes at character level word level you can also choose these things so let's say okay
just say yes. See, you can see all those changes that has been applied to your document. So there, there has been 40 revisions for this and all that is being displayed. So I would like to show all markups. And when you scroll, so you can see the change here. This is the original document. Are you able to see it? So now I guess. Yeah. So now you see the original document at the top and the revised document. And see over here, you can see the heading in this format. I have changed it to title. In the revised document, it has changed. So you can see here balloon text font default tahoma so all these things will be displayed here so style definition has been changed so you you are going to see this part so you can say it is rev reviewing pane is available to us just to say what uh, reviews have been done to your uh, document so you can see all those things so you can wish to see all revisions within the balloon, all revisions in line. So you have so many things here. So when you scroll it, you can see these two documents will also scan, scan I mean, scroll along with the comparison that we are having here. So this is a great way to check where exactly the changes have been applied. Okay, so you can see here. So this entire thing has been changed. See over here, you don't have any table given, but in the revised document, you can see a table has been inserted. So you can see the change here. So here you don't have table in the original document. In revised document, you, they have inserted a table. So this is the best way to review what all changes have been done even if they have not chosen track changes so to see exactly what are the changes where they have made changes you can compare those two documents and get to see all those revisions in a separate document like this and even over here so if you wish to accept some changes you can choose here accept or move to next accept this change so it's left to you whether you want to accept this or you would just ignore it by rejecting it. So this is the best way you can get back to all the changes done by someone else for your document. Okay. So this is one thing. And after we are done with this, let's say I would like to save this file. I'll give, so let's give, uh, yeah, I'll choose this. I want to save it there. Now once I have saved, so I would like to remove all these things. Now let's hope we have accepted all changes or I've left few so that all those things are fine except this change. It will move to next. Now let's say you have left these things. So some of the comments, so some of the changes which you have not accepted or rejected. So it is lying like this. Let's say you want to quickly send it to someone. You can always inspect your document before doing that. So what you could do here. See now, let's say I have hidden this. So this happens when you have hidden the markups. So that never shows up. So you don't know, you might have left some uh, you know, track changes, information of these track changes as it is in your document. So these things and also some uh, personal information that is the author name when it was created, these things you would not like to share it with someone uh, or you don't like, uh, you don't want that person to get access to those information. You can always inspect your document before sending it. So we have that option here. And before you do this, it is always best to keep a copy of it ready. So keep a separate copy of it because some changes done by this inspect document cannot be undone. 
so it, it's always best to have a, an extra copy of this file before you do this now i'll say okay see here you have options to inspect all these so whether you have in your document or not it will inspect the document and it will let you know so let me inspect see i have comments revisions and versions left behind so they are still there in the document i don't want any other person so to whom i share this file to have access to these things i'll just say remove all and even these things see document properties i would not like the other person to have access to these things i'll remove it once you remove it see even here we have some data I'll just say remove so once we have removed you can reinspect just to check if you have an, anything left so it's good to go so no you still have this so reinspect okay these are coming up anyways i think oh, you have to go and make changes in the document itself so once it's done close it and now you can share your document without any fear of uh, you know having the other person access to all these things to the revisions that you have done to your document or the personal information the document properties being shared with someone so you can see the author names have been removed from this so previously it was displaying the author names so now after you remove that data it's not appearing over here so you can do this always to you know maintain that anonymity and next is protection of this document see there are very high levels of protection and also a certain you know lenience that you would like to give to your user see if you want this to be a very strong protection you can always go for encrypt with password if you select this see your document will open only if they provide the password that you have given okay and it is case sensitive as well so this will give you a high level of protection to your document and uh, you know let's say it's a very confidential document some agreement or contract that you are trying to share to someone over the mail so you don't want it to be accidentally accessed by unauthorized people so you can always share this document protected by encrypting it with a password let's say you don't like to uh, restrict to that level as well so you, what you can do is control the type of changes others can make so you can keep these things over here limit formatting so allow only this type of editing in the document so you can choose here what type of changes you would like to give and inform and in, if you say yes start enforcing protection so it will again ask you to provide password so once you give this so whatever changes you restricted those things will not allowed will not be allowed by the user to do so rest of the changes they are allowed to do so these things you, have, you can check and based on you know, what uh, level of protection you would like to give you can always do that so let's say always open read only or mark as final let me take this see mark as final will be saving your document saying that this is the final draft so you are trying to indicate the user that this is indeed a final draft but if they anyways want to edit it they can go here see on this so just below the ribbon are you able to see it yeah see here you can click edit anyway the user can click edit anyway and make changes to your document so again uh, see just after opening the document you know accidentally you don't want any changes uh, for this document to take place for that you can always mark as final and you can always indicate the user that it is the final draft so these are the different levels of protection that we can impose on our documents okay 
So let me stop recording.